Hallelujah. This is the, once again, a part of our service where we take uh, our tithes and our offerings. Come on, come on, that's right, that's right, praise God. We understand that this is also an act of worship towards God in Jesus' name. Amen. So for the first time, visit if those are your first time here. At Fit for the Kingdom, we believe everything we do is a teachable moment. So even when we give unto the Lord, we teach from it. We give scripture from it. Amen. Let's dive into this uh, scripture reading becoming this morning from Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Now, let me, let me just go over this briefly. Because this is a familiarized scripture here that, you know, this is like a foundational teaching, especially dealing with our series. Now, anytime God give me a, a scripture or a word for the week, I go and pray about it. But the Lord said this is a day of remembrance. You understand? So we remember not only his resurrection, but this is a day of remembrance. So the Lord told me, he said, remind the children of God how to operate out of the Garden of Eden, even when they give. Do you understand? All right. Now, check this out. It said Genesis 8, 22. He said, while the earth remain, seed time and harvest, cold heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. What I want to focus on is why the earth remains seed time and harvest. In this in this ministry, we understand that as you, as you give, you should receive. You understand? As you sow, you should reap. But this is what God told Noah right after he ended the world with flood. You understand? But when he told Noah this, he wanted Noah to see a reflection how truly the Garden of Eden operate. I want you to follow me. We're still on giving. Now, how the seed time and harvest is what produce or what grows in your garden. But the Lord told me, even if I take you guys back to the Garden of Eden, before you can understand the Garden of Eden, you must understand that you are God nerd. Follow me. You must understand that you are God nerd. So if you understand you are God nerd, one of the most important tools that every gardener in the Garden of Eden has is his mouth. Do you understand? The most important tool that a gardener has in the Garden of Eden is his mouth. You understand? So he said, if in, in the Garden of Eden, Adam did a couple of things. He worked, right? Not only did he work, but he was surrounded by God's presence. When you come into the kingdom of God, you understand the presence of God is on the inside of you. And when you understand the presence of God is on the inside of you, you must understand you have a work you have to do. So if I got God's presence and I'm working, then the God of Eden is on the inside of me. So if the God of Eden is on the inside of me, then I can operate just like Adam and I can speak life to everything that's around me. Do you follow what I'm saying? So I can name my seed. Do you hear me? I can name what I give into the kingdom because I'm operating out the Garden of Eden. So he says it's time to put the children of God back in remembrance to the most powerful thing, and that's to start speaking over their seed. He said because what you want is literally a command away. Do you understand? What you want is a command away. So he says seed, time, and harvest. Seed, time, and harvest. In other words, if it comes from the God, harvest has to come up. Do you understand? If it comes from the God, harvest has to come up. And the reason why it has to come up, because the garden is in you. Hallelujah. Seed, time, and harvest. In Jesus' name. If you need an envelope or an ink pen, keep your hands raised. You got ushers on the left and on your right. Hallelujah. This is a day of remembrance. Hallelujah. Why are you doing that? Also keep in mind that there's many words to get many ways to give. You can text the word give to 804-348-8300. You can cash out dollar sign fake kingdom. And you can donate from your from your bank account to fftkgm.org. And his brother Gerald said, don't forget, guys, you can, you can sow and you can give into the faith campaign. You can, let me say that again. You can sow and you can give into the faith campaign because we are a ministry on a mission for the kingdom of God. You understand? We are a ministry on a mission to move the kingdom of God and advance the kingdom of God on earth. Hallelujah. Give you guys a little bit of time, and when you get your offerings ready, we're going to pray over it. And the reason why, once again, we speak or we, we speak a confession because we operate from the God. Because everything we want is a command away. Hallelujah. When you're ready, say amen. All right. Repeat after me. Because I am a sower, God multiplies my seed. 
Because I believe. I receive what God has for me. Because I'm good ground. I never lack. Because I live by faith. I prosper in what I do. Because I'm a curse breaker. My family is blessed. Because I walk in victory. I am a winner. Because I'm a lender and not a borrower. Because God is. So am I in the earth. Because I give, I receive. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. And running over. Therefore, me and given to my bosom. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, according to your word, I have sown a financial seed. Therefore, I take lordship over my financial harvest. Financial harvest, come forth. Come forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise, praise God. At this time, we're going to ask our apostle. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Oops. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. Praise God. He's alive. He's alive. Today is, thank you guys so much, appreciate you guys. Today is the most important day in our faith. This is the most important day in our entire faith because if he did not raise from the dead, then we are in trouble. But I want to tell you, he's alive. Uh, I know he's alive because he spoke to me just last night. <laughs> and dead people don't speak. You guys look really, really good. Yes. Look amazing. Are you guys, thank you, I appreciate that. Are you guys ready to receive some, uh, some revelation today? Yes. Okay. I just want to announce a few things and then, then we'll get started. We're going to release the children of Children's Church and Teen's Church, so you guys can go ahead and do that now. Leave your phones with your parents, please. No cell phones. So Children's Church, Teen Church, you guys go ahead and have a wonderful time. Father... As our children go back to learn, we thank you that you guys, uh, they're ready to learn and you're going to bless them and they're going to receive something that will change their lives forever in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Did I tell you guys how good you look? Okay. You guys look really good. Thank you. You guys, you guys look. <clears throat> yeah. You guys look absolutely amazing. We're we going we to need, we need a whole ministry for, uh, a whole building for our children. Yeah. So some of you guys were not here last, last uh, Sunday when we made this announcement, so I want to reiterate it. Uh, we met with our, a, a banker, and what the banker shared is that we can pursue the building that we want. And, and thank, thank God for every single one of you guys who have supported and is supporting our, our vision. And this is what I was told by the banker and also my pastor uh, told me this as well. What I was told is where we are year three, there are ministries who are not there year 12. Y'all should be clapping for that. Y'all should clap for that. <laughs> so, so what that means is not only have you guys supported, not only have you guys seen the vision, but it also means that we have been good stewards. Amen. 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 You know, um, I, from the beginning, I always said that we are a young ministry that does big business. In other words, we are in the community. We are supporting families, households. We support so many people. We actually donate thousands of dollars Every year, when I say thousands, I don't mean like 5,000, like for real. We, we five digits. Amen. Let me say it that way. <laughs> See, y'all, y'all. <laughs> <Hallelujah. Hallelujah. laughs> 
And it's because I believe in the model. I believe that the model is that we are the bank. I believe in the book of Acts when the, the people brought the money to the feet of the apostles and the apostles spread the money out to the community. I believe that. So somebody may say, that's not smart. Well, I'm not being smart. I'm being in faith. I don't want to be smart. I want to be in faith. You got it? I want to be in faith. So we're going to keep on sowing to keep on reaping. You got it? Praise God. So uh, another thing is, yesterday we had our wealth class. Was it fire? Was it fire? Okay, so look. So look. So now we're working on part, part two. It'll be like in three weeks. Right? And I got a guy coming from uh, New York Life Insurance. Right? He's going to speak about insurance policies, trust, everything we need to know about finances. In this ministry, we are big on empowering the people. So we are here for your emotional, financial, mental, and physical wellness. So if you need a workout plan, I'm the guy for that. If you need, if you need a plan for your nutrition, look me up. I got you. Right? So we're going to do whatever we can. Don't I look fit? Yeah. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Just making sure. Just making sure. Making sure. Making sure. Because you see, we can't be fit for the kingdom. And I, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure. Make sure. You got me? You got my side profile? It's, it's my good side. My good side. My good side. My good side. All right, so, so no, but listen, we are real big, man, and, and making sure the people are empowered. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? So we're going to keep feeding you guys what you guys need to succeed in every sense of the word. April 16th is our baby dedication, Amen. which is next Sunday. Yes. Next Sunday, we are dedicating babies to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, if you have not registered, do so, please. Also, uh, our baptism is May the 13th. Yeah. For those who want to be baptized... We are baptizing people May the 13th. Uh, also, one more thing. I want to thank you guys. My wife and I want to thank you guys for your seat of honor. We went out on vacation last week, and you guys sold that seat of honor. And I want to tell you that you can expect an honor harvest. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Right. Lastly, what I'm asking you guys to do is partner with me. Would you please share this message right now? Would you grab your phones for me? Those also who are online, would you please grab your phones and press the share button. Uh, today is the most important day uh, of our walk with God, and um, I want uh, this message to be shared. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover your sight to the blind, to set at liberty, those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Father, let everyone see that you are God and I am your son. Put your grace on me as I speak to your sons and daughters. Holy Spirit, you are always the teacher. I am just a vessel. Partner with me right now that we will glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us an encounter like never before. None of me and all of you. I decrease that you may increase. And we thank you for your angels who are here now. We welcome miracles, signs, and wonders. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's message is titled, I Got the Power. I got the power. I want you to say that. Say, I got the power. I, got the power. I want you to look at somebody and say, I got the power. I got the power. Look at somebody else and say, wait a minute. I don't think you heard me. I said, I got the power. You got the power. Today we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because he died and rose on the third day. But as I was spending time with God, he shared with me that I should really do a teaching where we could understand how this whole thing worked. Because if we're just focusing on what happened when he was buried, that we're missing the entire picture of the, the, the whole storyline. Because there's a fantastic storyline to the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And so a lot of people do not, uh, they don't focus on the storyline. And when you don't focus on the storyline, you miss a lot of things that will empower you. The Bible says that in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. So let me give you the storyline. Can we do that today? Yes. 
I want to teach you. So what happened was that God was in heaven, and God had an idea. He said, I, 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 want, to, I want to create people just like me. I want people to operate like me. I want them to function like me. I want them to be just like me. And what I want to do is I want to give the people their place to rule. Heaven is mine. I rule there. But what I want to do now is make people and give them a place to rule. So what he did was he took man and put man in the earth and placed man in the garden. Right? And so what happened was the garden was a significant place because when you look at it in the Hebrew text, what the Garden of Eden means is, it means the spirit, the place where the spirit of God dwelled. So that's what made the Garden of Eden the same as heaven because the spirit of God dwelled in that place. You got it? Okay, so now the Garden of Eden is a representation of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so heaven is the kingdom. It is a kingdom. And so the garden is the kingdom as well. And so what happened was the serpent came into the garden. And when he came into the garden, he overthrew the kingdom. He performed a coup. When Adam and Eve sinned, that was his way of overthrowing the government. And now a new government was in place. You got it? So a, a new government came into the equation when Adam and Eve followed the instructions of the serpent. So there was no longer a kingdom of light. Now we have a kingdom of darkness. You got it? Okay. So that's our storyline. All right. This resurrection is really about two kingdoms. Okay. It's not about just him being risen from the dead. It's greater than that. It's, well, it was a coup for a coup. And I'll explain that to you even more. So when, 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 when Adam and Eve sinned and the government of God was over, overturned, then every king wants his kingdom back. He wants his kingdom back. This, it belongs to him. So God said, I need a plan to get my kingdom back. How do I get my kingdom of light back and disperse or remove the kingdom of darkness? Okay? So let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Verse 6, please. It says, well, 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Now, look what it says here. And the what? And the what? The government. And the government. So, see now, this is now a battle of governments or systems. Okay, because Jesus did not bring nothing on his shoulder, but what the government, you got it. So now the government is upon his shoulders. Right. And he shall be called what? Wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of what? And now look what it says again of the increase of whose government, his government. His government right. And peace. There will be what? No end. So now. We're seeing that when Jesus came into the earth, what did he bring with him? A government, right? Now, that government came to overthrow the government that was in place. There was the government in place. And what he did was he came to overthrow that government. You got it? So Jesus came to perform a coup. We're going we're to build this thing up because you're going to see why you got the power. You got it? Okay. And so a lot of times we focus on how powerful Jesus is, and that's fine. But we focus on his power to the point where it makes you powerless. And that's not the truth. The same power that he has, you have. You don't believe me? Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 11, please. Yeah, I'm going to build this thing up. I feel my teacher mode coming on. So I'm going to be real calm. I'm trying not to be excited. You know how I get, right? But I'm trying to be nice and calm. Because this thing really jumping on me. I'm really ready to go, you know. All right. But look what it says. I want to prove to you what I'm talking about. It says here, but if the, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells where? 
And where? Say in me. Amen. Come on. See, see, it dwells in you. Watch me now. He who raised Christ from the dead would also give life to what? Your mortal bodies through what? His spirit who dwells where? It's in you. Oh, my God. It's in you. So you are just like him. That's why today's message on Resurrection Sunday is you got the power. When Adam sinned, let me explain something to you. When Adam sinned, I want you to just imagine this if, if you can. When Adam sinned, imagine, imagine jumping out of a plane, right? Without a parachute, right? And imagine having the feeling of being out of a plane with no parachute, but yet never falling. Now, I want you to, I, I have to paint this for you. You were out of a plane. You're falling with no parachute, but you never hit the ground. So that, that fear and that feeling and that torment continues for eternity. That's, what, that's a, a small depiction of what hell is. Right? Hell is jumping out of a parachute, I mean a plane rather, with no parachute, and you are in constant fall mode but never falling to the ground. And, and so what Jesus did was, as the commando who he is, say, Jesus is the commando. So what he did was, he came into humanity with the parachute of rescue. All right? So now, I want you to see something here, right? When, when, when Adam sinned, the serpent hijacked humanity. The, the, the soul of humans were hijacked. And so what Jesus had to do was, he had to come in with a, the word that God gave me is covert. Can you show me that, that slide with covert? Because this is the military word. See, I want to get y'all ready for, for, for war. We, we, we not, we not, we not uh, celebrating the guy who was whipped real bad. No, no, this was war. So the word covert means, listen, Conceal or disguise secret. So what Jesus did was he came to fight war, but he was concealed. He was disguised. That's why he came as a child and not as a man. I'm going to talk to you today. See, 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 they didn't see him coming because he was the baby. The child was born. You got it? So the child came concealed. He, he was the commando coming to overthrow the government. Herod knew that. That's why he wanted to kill the babies three years and under. Right? But being that he was on a mission, listen, the angels woke up Joseph and said, get the commando to safety. And so they moved him from, from where he was and moved him to a different town to keep him safe. And then he came back after Herod was dead to overthrow the kingdom of darkness. All right? Okay. So, I want you to see something here. Just as God planted Eve inside of Adam, God planted Holy Spirit inside of you. God took the woman and put her inside the man. So what God did was he took Jesus and put him inside of you. That's the reason why when, 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 when Adam gave birth to Eve, God cut his side to bring her out. But on the cross, they cut his side to bring you out. See, I'm, 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 I'm trying to build something up here. So they cut sides to give birth to you. Say, I got the power. I want to show you why you should, you should really understand resurrection. 
Let's go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 51 and 53, please. Are you guys, are we, are we okay? Are we there? And suddenly, one of those who worked with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword, struck the servant of the high priest, and cut off what? His ear. Now watch me on this. Listen. Listen to the commando. But Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Listen. Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than what? Twelve legions of what? That's, that's the military force. That's the military force. So the commando says, I got more than 72,000 angels I can call to handle business. But what he said was, natural means would not overthrow the government. They got natural swords. I'm going to give you a different sword. Say, I got the power. Now, I'm going to show you what your sword is. Because, you see, unless we just, uh, if, if we just focus on what happened when they buried him, you're going to miss your sword. That's the reason why we come to these services, we have these meetings, yes, Jesus, yes, Jesus, and then we leave defeated because you ain't drawing your sword. See, today it's about him rising, but if he rose, you rose too. Thank God he rose because if he didn't rose, if he didn't raise from the dead, you would not be in trouble, but don't get it twisted. He rose, so did you. So I'm going to give you your sword to have you in this risen place at all times. You ready? Now watch me on this. Jesus now is telling the people about performing a coup. And we missed it. We think these are just words. Let's, and I love this scripture so much. I love this scripture. It just, it just speaks to me. Let's go to John chapter 16. Verse 7 to 15, and I'm reading to you from the Amplified Version. Now, you've got to have eyes to see this. Say, I got the power. power. Did you hear what that young man said? And out, out the mouth of babes, Sire said out loud, I got the power. He's in tune. Praise God. Now listen to this, but I tell you the truth, it is to your what? It is to your advantage. Whose advantage? It is to your advantage. This is the coup now. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, what happens? The helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by. Will not come to you. See, in other words, listen, as long as I'm here, I'm by your side. I can't perform a coup. Because the coup happened internally. It was not an external coup. See, see. As long as I'm with you, nothing going to change. Because I've been with you all this time, but you're still acting crazy. You've seen the miracles. You've seen the signs and the wonders. You experience it. Ain't nothing change. So this ain't the way I'm going to perform my coup. I'm going to perform a coup the way it happened the first time. When the coup was performed the first time, you died. So now I'm going to die so that, so that you may live. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Come on. Oh, boy. Listen. But if I go, I will send him. Who? To who? Yeah. To be where? I'm 
telling you, boy, when I got this thing, I said, good God almighty. He said, and he, when he comes, he will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need of a savior. And about what? Righteousness. And about what? Judgment. Look, about sin and the truth nature of it because they do not believe in me and my message about righteousness, personal integrity, and godly character because I am going where? To my father. You will no longer see me. You're not going to see me, but now you're going to feel me. See, seeing me didn't change you. I got to get inside of you so you can feel me. You, you, know, you, know, you know that saying when you be like, yo, you feel me? It came from this right here. You feel me? All right. Is this good? You feel me? Okay, that came from Jesus. All right. Okay, look. Verse 11, right? About judgment. The certainty of it. Because the ruler, now this is the, this is, this is the ruler, this is Satan now. The ruler of this world, Satan, has been judged and condemned. Nobody's been judged ever in history, only Satan. Look, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear to hear them now. Now watch me. Here is the cool. Here is the cool. Verse 13. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he would guide you into what? Fully complete what? Mm -hmm. For he will not speak his own initiative, but he will speak whatever he hears from who? The message regarding what? My God. And he will discuss what disclose to you what is to come when in the future that's the cool see what he did was well let me finish my god he will glorify and honor me because he the holy spirit will take from what is mine and will do what to how to you but he's disclosing it in close quarters See, see, okay, for those who are in relationship, I'm talking about a husband and a wife. Y'all be doing that pillow talk. Don't you do pillow talk? That's what that is right there. That's Holy Spirit giving you pillow talk. <laughs> Telling you what's to come, what's to happen. So what he did was he overthrew the government when he died because when he died, when he died, his spirit said, excuse me, I'm coming in. Yeah. And when that happened, Satan had to leave and he came inside of you. So the death of Christ is about the coup of Christ. See, we keep seeing Christ as a lamb, the lamb of God, and all of that is true. But don't forget one thing. He's the captain of the Lord of hosts. Boy, he know how to fight. You follow what I'm talking about? So what he did was, he went inside of you. So now watch me on this. You were in a fallen state. But when he went inside of you, everything rose. So everything inside of you now is in a risen state. See, so right now, not only should you celebrate him being risen, but in all reality, you should say, I'm risen too. So, 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 if something in your life does not represent something being risen, it's because you, you accepted that fallen state. Because Satan is no longer in you. He can't be. Because that spirit was, was excused. It was, it, it was evicted. Oh, that's the word I want to hear. He took the spirit of Satan and he says, you got to go because I'm coming back and, and occupy my property. See, see, 
See, that's why pull up with me. Pull up with me. Uh, pull up. Pull up. Uh, First John four four. See, see, I want you to feel empowered today. We celebrate the Lord and Savior being risen, but it ain't just limited to Him. Because when He rose, you rose too. Look, you are of God. Who is that? Who's of God? Little children, right? And have overcome them because he who is in you, come on now, is greater than what? See, 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 you, ah. All right, calm down. Let me see. He's telling you where Satan is. Where is he? He's no longer in you. He got evicted. Now who's in you? Come on, talk to me. So, so Satan was there. But when Jesus performed the coup, he kicked him out and put him in the world. So now Satan don't have a kingdom any longer. The reason why Satan don't have a kingdom any longer is because he no longer has you. Where's the kingdom? It's, it's inside of you. Where's the kingdom? Say the kingdom is in me. Now follow me on this. So if the kingdom is in you, and Christ is in you in the form of Holy Spirit, then that must mean there's a throne inside of you that Christ is sitting on. It's not in the notes. It's not in the notes. Give me Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Come on. Come on, we in it. See, I want you to say with me one time, I got the power. This ain't, this, ain't, this ain't just to make you feel good. This is to let you know what's really happening. And I want you to, I want you to reach for your sword if you don't mind and just pull it out. Yeah, that's Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to cut away any issue from your life. Cut it. Just cut it. You need to cut it. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? And where? In you. In you. And now look what he brings in you. What is it? That's what I'm trying to tell you. You should not be hopeless because hope and glory is inside of you. You follow what I'm talking about? See, see, one of my, one of my, my, well, let me say this. My greatest fight is to see the people of God look like the book. That's, that's my greatest fight. And the problem is, unless we get sound teaching that would empower the people and not keep the people relying on a certain individual. Or, 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 or spoon feed the people or manipulate the people or to say that the more empowered they become the more they're not going to need me you shouldn't need me anyway because listen listen I can't rely on me I'm relying on him you, you follow what I'm talking about so, so what I'm trying to do here is get you to get to to understand that your power is not in me. It's in him. Which is in you. The Christ, Christ in you. The what? Hope of glory. You follow me? But see, witchcraft is in the pulpit. You see? And we got too much people in darkness when light is available. Say, let there be light. There's, there is no darkness in you. I'm going to give you every sense of revelation you can get. To empower you. To let you know that you can pull out your sword anytime. You know, 
Let me, let me show you something. Lord have mercy. Am I being calm? Am I doing? Thank, thank you, thank you. I, I'm trying to, you know. Okay, all right. Whew. Okay, let's go to John chapter 14. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 12 to 14. I critique myself when I watch, and I'd be like, well, you should have been more calm, Enrique, you know. You know. But my personality, though, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm, I'm aggressive, and I'm amp, you know. So I'm animated, you know. I'm trying to, trying to, you know. Don't change your pocket, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> but when this thing get on you, you know, it, 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 you just can't be cool with him, you know. I was watching Jesse do planets, and Jesse said that last night, he said, when he went to heaven, he realized that Jesus really isn't a teacher. He said, he's really a preacher. He says that Jesus came out of this consuming fire and says, I'm going back over there. I'm going to get your brothers. I'm going to get your sisters. They're coming back to the kingdom. He wasn't being cool and proper. We think he was cool and proper, but we keep forgetting that he's the person who overthrew a government. That's right. And I'm going to tell you, you cannot overthrow a government being cool and proper. Right. Got to be gangster with it. Yeah. That's why I say you need to cut it. Yeah. You, need to, you need to grab that sword out of you and look at that issue. I'm going to cut you. That's your sword. Yes, you follow what I'm talking about? Okay. Now, Let's go, so we did. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and what? Then these he will do. Why? Now listen. Listen. If you're going to do greater works than him, and he's no longer here, then how are you doing the work? Holy Spirit, where is he? See, when he left you, he didn't leave you the way you think. He left your side to be inside of you. He left you, he left you physically, that way he can occupy you spiritually. So you're not alone. You got him with you. And because he knows how to fight any battle that comes against you, you already got the victory plan. There's a strategy for everything you need to bring resurrection to your life. See, inside of you dwells resurrection power. That's the reason why nothing should be dead in your life because you got someone in you that didn't allow anything to die in him. And what, listen, listen, he don't dwell amongst the dead. He dwells amongst the living. That means that you're alive. So you can look at your finances, your emotions, you can look at your mindset and even your physical body and say, live. You can, you can, you can put that bill, you can put that bill, you can put that bill on the table. Now, now you, listen, you got to have faith for this. Yeah. This ain't this conversation. This is war. Yeah. This is how you overturn the government that's trying to hold you back. You can look at that bill that's lingering in your life and is holding you dead and said, in the name of Jesus, live. What that means? Be paid in full. You can talk to your husband, talk to your wife, talk to your children, talk to that car, talk to the animal. I don't care what it is. If something in your life is crooked, God in you has the power to make it straight. That's called resurrection. That's called resurrection. Because when he rose, everything that was dead 
came up with him. He came up alive. It went down dead, but he came back alive. And he gave you the keys, the access to it. That's why he says, I got to go. Why? I'm performing a coup. And Peter says, you can't go. Now, who was speaking? How we know that? He says, get thee behind me. He didn't say Peter. He understood. When Peter spoke, that was Satan speaking through Peter. He understood a poisonous conversation. How many of you, how many of you are, are, are listening to a poisonous conversation or, or, or speaking poisonous to yourself? Because the revelation is that a poisonous conversation holds you to the grave. And so what you have to see is that when Jesus died, he gave you the green light to press forward. Because it tells us in the word of God that all God's promises are what? And who? All God's promises are yes and amen in Christ. Where, where's Christ? So you don't need nobody else's yes. You got your yes. Can I get a yes? Yes, you got your yes. No, do, do you see the cool? Listen, 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 listen. You're going for this thing right here, and the roadblock says you can't have it. That puts you in the grave, but you're no longer in the grave. You're risen. So even though they gave you a no, you don't stop at your no. You, 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 you move past the no until you get your yes. You don't need yes from man. You got God's yes. Now, where is the yes? In you. So you can look at the no and say, wait a minute. I know you saying no, but he told me yes. And when you talk to the no long enough, the no would have to change to the yes. yes Why? Christ in who? In the, the, the hope of what? Oh. It's in you. So don't lose hope because you have been resurrected. I'm almost done, I promise. Take it down. Take it down, the body of Christ needs to really understand that Resurrection Sunday is not about one person. It's about the kingdom that was invaded in you. See, what made the work finish was he took himself, the throne, he put the, everything that belongs in heaven, everything that was in the Garden of Eden, and he says, now I performed the coup. Now I'm occupying Gerald. So now Gerald can... Gerald can function just like me, watch me, and greater. Now I'm occupying Dana. I know she been through this and I know that may happen, but I'm occupying Dana. So now whatever she been through, I have overturned it and now I'm ruling in her favor. You follow what I'm talking about? You have overturning power in you. And everything that, that comes against that is a smoke screen. See, he would not say you can do more if you could not do more. But he's not saying you can do more. Listen, he's not saying you can do more on your ability. You can do more with the Holy Spirit in you. Okay, now, which, now watch me on this. Who rose Jesus from the dead? Who rose him from the dead? It wasn't God. 
It was Holy Spirit. See, see, let me sit down on this right here. My God. There's three functions of God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God the Father did not raise him. It was God the Holy Spirit. And if I had time, I'd break down how all three function, but that's a whole new, different message. You follow what I'm talking about? It was, it was Holy Spirit who raised him because Holy Spirit was going to come inside of you to raise you. So when Holy Spirit raised him, he also raised you. I can prove it to you. You ready? It's not in the notes. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 NIV. As I hear him talk to me. Say Holy Spirit you're welcome here. Can you feel him? There's fire coming through. Do y'all see fire on me? Because I, I can feel fire. I'm telling you, I, I, I feel fire all on me. Now, I don't, know if, I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel it. I can feel it, mother. I'm telling you, it's all on me. I just feel this thing. It says, look, I, look, look, look. Look what it says. Look what it says. Were, were you there when he was crucified? Were you there physically? Okay, so look what it says. I have been crucified with Christ. He, he's saying you were there, but not physically. How were you there? Say your spirit. So you've been crucified with Christ. No longer do you live. Who lives in you? How does Christ live in you? Because a person cannot enter another person and live in them. I can't jump into my wife and live in her. See, me and her have a close relationship, but it's nothing compared to what she has with Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is inside of her. See, I can just walk side by side with her. I can jump in the car, go to New York, and leave her side. But if she goes to New York and goes to Calcutta, Holy Spirit is still there. the sword that's your sword you can call him anytime he says look the life I live in the body I live by faith what in the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me see that's the that's the power you have for resurrection you can listen I'm not making this up I'm telling, you the, I'm telling you the God honest truth. I'm going to testify, give you one more scripture, and I'm gone. Because I'm doing a wedding today after I leave here. Praise Woo! God. <laughs> they, they, they better be ready. Because I'm going to give you some fire. <laughs> this ain't going to be no regular wedding. They're going to be like that pastor off the chain. Yes, I am. I'm on fire from Sunday service. Praise God. 15 years ago or more, I walked into a hospital room at MCV, and two brothers were shot violently. She was there, she can tell you. My, my mom could testify to it too. And the man was shot in his head, and he was brain dead. His brain was swelling at a rapid rate, and they said he was dead. I walked into that room. I cursed that spirit, I rebuked death, I prayed over him, and in less than 24 hours, he rose. Hallelujah. True story. Hallelujah. I can't make this up. I didn't do it. Who did it? Holy spirit. Holy spirit. See, I came to the reality of knowing this, that I have the same power that he has, and if he gets results, I get results too. And I'm not taking no for an answer. I refuse it. I refuse it. I'm not going to take no for an answer. I got that pit bull faith. If he can do it, I can do it too. I was, I was at, a, at a church, uh, a church of God in Christ in Mansfield, Ohio. I can't make this up. She can testify. Pastor Walter Jordan is the pastor's name. He went on to be with the Lord. The church is called the Oasis of, of God Church uh, in Mansfield, Ohio. You can call them and ask them for the recording. I'm pretty sure they still have it. A man walked up to me, full-blown AIDS. 
I mean, he was dead as dead can be. He, his, his color was gray. I pray for that man. Boom, he fell. Spoke to the pastor a few weeks later. I said, Pastor, what's going on at your church? He said, man, you know, you know that guy you pray for? I said, uh, which one? He said, the one that had AIDS. I said, yeah. He said, you know, when you left here, he went to the hospital. And he kept them all day running tests on him. And then they paid for his flight and sent him back to Atlanta to the CDC because they want to find out what he ate, what he took to eliminate the AIDS virus. I, I'm not making this up. It happened. Who did it? Okay. All right. Okay. I just want to testify. All right. Okay. A girl came to me with an issue of blood. I can't make this up. She's bleeding nonstop. She, she's just constantly bleeding. I said, well, I, I, I know what to do here because I saw somebody who did it. I read about it. And if I just do what he do, then it has to happen because it happened for him. Who did it? I prayed over her. She went home. Boom. It stopped. Christ and who? I'm telling you that when you have the reality that he's in you and nothing in you, listen, listen, nothing around you is authorized dead. You'll change your focus. You'll change it. You'll change it because he has given you the ability to do what he did and greater. My last scripture and I'm done. See, we celebrate his resurrection. But how about yours? See, this was, this was a military attack. See, you were hijacked by the kingdom of darkness. And God the Father gave Jesus the military strategy to get you out of bondage. He said, son, even though you're a lion, I want you to first come as a lamb. Oh, boy. Jesus Christ, have mercy. Talk to me. Listen, you are, you are, yes, son, I understand. I, can I talk to you about the conversation they had? Can I tell you? Okay, all right. Son, I understand that you are the lion of Judah. But I don't need you now in lion mode. I need you to go as a lamb. Because you're going to be sacrificed. And I promise you, listen. Once you allow me to regain my government, mm -hmm. this is kingdom now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you back, not as a lion this time. I'm going to bring you back, I mean as a lamb. I'm going to bring you back as a lion. Okay, all right. So when he died, he died as a lamb. But when he rose, he rose as a Am I, am, 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 am I walking this recipe? Am I walking this recipe? Am I, am I walking this recipe? Talk to me. So inside of you is not who Peter knew. Inside of you is not who Bartholomew knew. Matthew don't know him. Not the him that you know. See, 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 I wish I had, I wish I had a church that would really get excited with me. Because I feel like I'm the only one in here. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's okay to get a little, you know, you know, like if your football team is winning, you ah! And then you hear that you won and you... Okay, all right, okay, all right. So what I'm trying to tell you is he gave you the touchdown to win the daggone Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Y'all walking me now. So, so inside of you is not the lamb. 
inside of you is the lion. Now, you got to see this now. I, I'm telling you I'm done, but this is on me so heavy, I can't, I can't do this real quick. I'm trying to, you know. <sighs> Jesus Christ, have mercy, man. You, you know him to a degree that Satan don't know him. See, Satan met him as a, as a lamb. He has not met him as lion yet. But he has given you the empowerment to introduce the lion to every serpent in your life. to overcome every serpent in your life. I'm telling you, he's returning as a lion, but because you guys are in partnership, he's allowing you to introduce the world to the lion of Judah and not the lamb of God. I'm still in the book. I ain't gonna say nothing else. I'm done. I'm telling you, forget that scripture. I'm telling you, I'm ending on that note. Somebody in here who 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 has a, a physical ailment in your body, I want to pray for you. Come up here right now. Anybody who has a physical ailment in their body, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. What's troubling you? Your down. heart. What's wrong with your heart? Um, I have a heart attack, a cardio, plus heart. You are okay. the risen 
Catherine. Catherine, is he your Lord and Savior? What do you feel in your body right now? I don't know. Nervousness. Anything in your heart? What do you feel in your heart? Anything? Tingling. Tingling? Raise your hands. Father, I pray for your daughter, Catherine. I speak to this heart. I command for a new heart. We're not asking for repairs. I command a new heart to fall upon this woman right now. And in the name of Jesus, we cancel any and all attacks of the enemy. Loose her now in Jesus' name. Loose her. Loose her. The fire of God. Fire of God. Fire of God. New heart. New heart. New heart in Jesus' name. New heart. New heart. New heart. Come forth. New heart. Go to the doctor. Get it checked out. Come back and testify. And I want you to thank God for a new heart. In Jesus' name. Breathe in deep. Breathe in. One for the Father. Come on out. Breathe in again. Come on. Perform in a coup. Come on. Come on. Say, Holy Spirit. Come on inside of me. Go in, Holy Spirit. Touch her. 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 Touch her, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Father God, I speak correction. Anything crooked in my mom's life, correct it now under the anointing. Fire of God. The fire of God in the name of Jesus. Correction. All crookedness straight in the name of Jesus. Come on, Tanya. Praise God. What am I praying for? Oh, man. Oh, in the name of Jesus, raise your hands. In Jesus' name. Is your body hurting right now? It could. Okay. Father, under this anointing, under the tangible evidence of your Holy Spirit, I pray from Calvary, from the victory. I curse arthritis right now. I curse sacerdosis right now. Die. Die in Jesus' name. Die. Be gone. Be gone. Loose sir. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her right now. In the name of Jesus. Sacerdosis, you die. You die. I curse you at the root. Arthritis, you die. I curse you at the root. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Do something now that, you could, that before was difficult. Do something that before was difficult. What do you feel in your body? Talk to me. Nothing. Nothing. You don't feel nothing. No pain. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Loose. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, come up here right now. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, come on, come on, come on. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, come on, 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 hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you want to rededicate your life, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you don't know Jesus, or if you want to rededicate your life, if you want to have a rededication to Jesus Christ, come up here right now. Come on. Come on. 
Do we have one more person in here? One more person. Come on. Come on. Rededication. Hallelujah. That's it. Come on, Dad. Come with her. Come on, Dad. Anybody else? Mom, Terry. Terry, where you at? Come up here with her. Anybody else? Anybody else? Rededication. Y'all show her love. Y'all, 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 y'all embrace her. Anybody else? Anybody else? You don't know Jesus or you want to have a rededication to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your moment in time right here. Don't sit in your seat. Listen, what I'm saying to you is if you were to die today, do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? If you don't know that right now, come here right now. If you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven if you die, come here right now. If you are playing Russian roulette, if you are playing Russian roulette in the spirit realm, come here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got the victory. Come on. Clap, clap, clap. Clap. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's healing up here. There's healing up here. Everybody up here and everybody in here and those online, I want you to shout with me, I got the victory. I got the victory. Let me explain to you what salvation is. It has nothing to do with how good you are. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life. None of that matters. When you say yes to Jesus, he'll wipe your record clean. As if you never did it. And I want you to understand that don't follow the voices of torment and all, don't follow that. When you came down here, he wiped your record clean. He loves you. Say, Father. Everybody in here, Father, I thank you for Jesus. He died for me and rose on the third day. I am free because of Jesus. Jesus is God in the flesh. He's the Son of God. Thank you, Jesus, for dwelling in me. Come on, the greater one lives in me. Thank you, Jesus, for wiping my record clean. I've done no wrong. Come on, I am delivered. You've done no wrong. You've done no wrong. Stay right here. Freedom of God, the peace of God, the love of God. You've done no wrong. Come on, you've done no wrong. You are free. You are free. There's a lion inside of you. There's a lion inside of you. Come on, you've done no wrong. You've done no wrong. You're free. You've done no wrong. You've done no wrong. You've done no wrong, man. Come on, you're free. You're free. You've done no wrong. You've done no wrong. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look at me. 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 You've done no wrong. You've done no wrong. You are free. You hear me? You are free. You're delivered. You're free. You're delivered. You got it? Praise God. Gerald, go back there with my mom. 
with them. Go back there. You follow, follow Gerald. Y'all follow him. Follow him, please. Praise God. You are the reason. Clap. This, this is the gospel. The Savior came to wipe the record clean. You've done no wrong. You, you've done no wrong. I want you to accept that reality. I don't care what you've been through. You are delivered and set free. And when he rose, you rose too. You rose with him. Hallelujah. So, so now, Maurice is going to do communion. So we are going to partake in communion, okay? Hallelujah. Y'all feel empowered? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, let's do communion. Pass it out. Pass out the uh, communion elements. Let me get one for Maurice. Wait for them to, uh, everybody get a, a communion cup, please. Let me get, let me get it. I got you. Get, use the other one. Is it one up there? Okay. Yeah, we'll get it from her. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't this wonderful? Hallelujah. Y'all feel the power? Hallelujah. The I power of the it. Lord is in this place. Come on, man. The power of the Lord is here. The Bible says angels rejoice in heaven when one give his life to repentance and one give his life to the Lord. Hallelujah. This time we're going to take uh, communion. We take a communion. The Bible says that when we take of communion, make sure everybody have a cup. The works of the Lord until He come back. So we celebrate His resurrection. Let's stand up, guys. But we also know He's gonna come back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the Book of Corinthians that this is that we're gonna eat of the bread, and the bread is for His body. Everything that He did was for from Calvary. The beatings and the whips they did was for me and you. So that's why, Lord, we thank you today. We glorify you, Father God, for your, for your body and what you did for us, Father God. You say through your stripes we are healed, Father God. So in this day, we understand not only that we have power, Father God, we remember what you've done for us in Jesus' name. And for that, Father God, we will eat of this, your bread in remembrance of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible also said, this is my blood for my new covenant. I want to say everyone who just gave their life to Christ, you are in a covenant relationship with God. You are washed by the blood of Jesus. And in the blood of Jesus, there's power. It's power that we need. So, Father God, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for your blood, the same blood that shielded the children of Israel in Egypt. The same blood that's washing us and making us whole, Father God. The same blood, Father God, that covers us of our sins. So, Father God, we just want to thank you for your blood. We remember, Father God, what you've done for us, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let us drink. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we can do better than that. We got the power. Hallelujah. Come on, we got the power. And in closing, I just want to pray this over you guys. That the Lord will bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Let us go out with power. Let us go out with power. Let us go out and understand the kingdom of God is now with on the inside of us. And with that be saying, you guys have a blessed week. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So don't forget we're passing the out, okay? And also, uh, let's see. Hold on, Johanna. I think it's Johanna here, and uh, who else? Oh shucks. Let's see. Yep, Dennis. Dennis Cook and Johanna. There you go.